So we're going to do things a bit differently today because of the fact that I believe this is the first ever horror anthology that's been reviewed on this channel. So in an event like this where you have four different directors doing four separate unrelated stories, I find it unfair to review the film as a whole because you can't, it's not fair to, you know, rate the entire thing based on the flaws or failures of one director when there are three others involved. Um, and their stories are not connected. So rather than that, I'm going to review each of the four as a separate entity and tell you what I thought, and then by the end I'll tell you if I think the movie is worth watching as a whole or not. That being said... <laughs> XX, or Double X, is a an all-female-fronted anthology horror film. That's four separate female directors. Awesome. Really cool. This is marketed as a very much, you know, marketed very much as kind of a girl power experience because, again, like, it's, it's all four female directors. Most of the f shorts are female-driven. And it's just really, it's, it's cool. I love seeing female directors get more work in horror because it's not something you see very often. Um, so... This film is divided into four segments. The Box, The Birthday Party, Don't Fall, and Her Only Living Son. And I'm gonna just kind of go through them one at a time and tell you what I thought. Starting with The Box. Uh, the Box is directed by Jovanka Vukovic, and it's, it's based on a short story by Jack Ketchum of the same name. And it tells the story of, you know, a mother and her kids, and they're on the subway, and the son looks inside a present that a stranger has, and he starts acting very strangely and really weird, and this movie, or this short, hit me on a level that I wasn't expecting it to. It was rather disturbing just in the idea that it's, like, very nihilistic, almost, and it hits you in a place that just the idea of it is very fucked up and disturbing, really sort of sad. In, you know, watching your family passively starve themselves to death and not care is really fucked up. Um, that being said... The rest of the short didn't really do much for me. Um, it's, like I said, the idea is very disturbing. There's some gorgeous cinematography in here. Javanka Vukovic did a great job in terms of the visuals, but past that, the acting is mediocre, the editing is not very good, and it doesn't hit as hard as it should with an idea so disturbing. Like, I wanted to be shaken to my core by it, and I wasn't. I was just kind of like, oh, that's fucked, and that was it. And it was just kind of, it's, it was missing something, and but overall, I definitely think this was one of the stronger ones of the four. And I'm gonna say it was a, it's good for a fans of you know existential cosmic horror. Next on the list is the directing debut of Annie Clark, also known as Saint Vincent, called The Birthday Party. It tells the story of a mother on on the day of her daughter's birthday, she finds her husband dead in his office. One thing I really liked about this film, it's pure aesthetic. That's I can't stress that enough. Everything about this movie is gorgeous. Annie Clark did a really good job with the visuals of this of this short. Past that, not so much. It's meant to be more of a black comedy, which is fine. I love the idea of, you know, really dark humor, except none of the jokes really land at all. It's a lot of time really just awkward humor and it's not funny, and there's only so many times you can watch it and go, oh, that's not funny, like, because they're not really delivering on any of the... What, what could be really funny, and could be a really funny situation, they're half-assing all of it, and so it's it's ultimately just kind of... Um, the only joke that really landed is the last joke in the short, and it made me laugh, but it's so far in, it's just sitting through 20 minutes of just awkward to get to one really funny joke, and it's not worth it, almost? I don't know. I'm overall gonna say that the birthday party is just sort of meh. I'm never gonna check that one out again for sure. Don't Fall is directed by Roxanne Benjamin. It tells the story of four friends who are on a camping trip out in the middle of what appears to be either, I don't know, somewhere in the American West. And 
some weird supernatural stuff starts happening. First off, I mean, Angela Trimber, my girl, love her. I love the idea of Native American folklore based horror. That's always really cool. But again, like, it's not really explored. I mean, the characters, again, the, the characters are actually pretty fleshed out and I, I, I found myself liking them even though they were sort of obnoxious. There were some decent practical effects, but the entire short, like, it doesn't really feel as though it's leading to anything. It just sort of happens. People die. Okay, cool. And there's nothing to it. It's very generic in that sense. It doesn't really offer anything new at all or groundbreaking at all, but it's... If you're a fan of, you know, like, old school monster slash slasher films, it's all right, but I mean, I'm gonna overall say it was just kind of meh. It's not something, again, that I was really super thrilled with. I wanted to like it more, but it was okay. But lastly, Her Only Living Son is directed by Karen Kusama, director of Jennifer's Body and The Invitation, is the best of the bunch, by far. Um, it's very much in the vein of we need to talk about Kevin. A uh, single mother is dealing with her troubled son, and crazy shit starts going on. Uh, it's almost, in a weird way, Rosemary's Baby meets The Babadook meets, uh, we need to talk about Kevin. It's very strange. It's very cool. Very great acting. Phenomenal direction from Karen Kusama, which is no shock because she is excellent. There's some really, you know, really strong uh, allegories in there. You know, the whole boys will be boys type rhetoric that's horrible and garbage that people spout out all the time, which is really awful. But um, there, the way it's, you know, tackled in this is in, I don't want to say a subtle way, but in a way that's allegorical and cool. And I, I really, really enjoyed this short the most out of all four of them. I think that was really, really incredibly well directed. Karen Kusama is such a fucking great director. And I want to see more of her work. So I want her to get more work in the horror field because it, The Invitation was one of my favorite films last year. Um, Jennifer's Body is maybe not maybe my favorite film, but it's a, it's a fun time. And this is just more proof that she really knows what she's doing and she really needs to get more work. And I'm, overall, I'm going to say that her only living son is absolutely solid. So as a whole, XX is sort of a mixed bag. Um, all the stories are tied together with these beautiful stop-motion claymation segments that are almost seem like out of a Tool music video. Really, really creepy, weird, cool. I loved those. Those were really great. But, um, I mean, the rest of the film is sort of a mixed bag. I think that The Box and Her Only Living Son are definitely the strongest of the bunch. I think it's worth maybe watching once. I don't really know if I would ever be, like, going to rush to recommend this to people. But if you're a fan of horror anthologies, if you're a fan of, you know, seeing female directors get more work in horror, check it out. It's worth giving it a watch. I don't know if it's worth, you know, buying. I don't know if it's worth watching again. It wasn't for me. That's not to say it's not for other people. But, you know, check it out. Decide for yourself. And if you like me and the others, they'll be back again soon. Uh, like and comment and subscribe. We'll be doing a review of Get Out really soon, so keep an eye out for that. Thank you so much, guys.